good. As I mentioned previously in the previous video, now we need to take into consideration when the user uh, mistypes something. So instead of rain, uh, they enter an extra N there or uh, something like that. And in that case, you want to let the user know that uh, they uh, typed something wrong there. So how do we do that? Well, if you have no idea how to do that, the best practice is to actually do some research on Google. Because you know the world of programming is very wide and you don't necessarily need to know every possible workaround or solution to do something. So uh, basically we need to, to figure out an algorithm to compare, uh, let's say the word rain with double N and, and the word, the actual word rain with one N at the end and say that whether these are decide whether these are similar or not but you don't have to reinvent the wheel if someone else has done it already so that's why you need to do some research on the web and see if this is something that uh, if there is an, a library that exists there or someone has a source code that does it a function or something like that but usually usually often you find a library for that so if you do some uh, research, you realize that you can do that using uh, a few libraries. And one of them is a standard library and it's called Diffflip. By the way, you can uh, get a list of standard of Python standard libraries in this page. So python.org library index.html. This is the link. Uh, here are all the standard libraries that you can import into Python. Hmm, so let me go here and import diffLib. Uh, so this is a library to compare text. And one of the methods is sequence matcher. It's a long name, so uh, what you can do is say from diffLib import sequence matcher. Mm. What that does is sequence matcher, you need to pass none there. Uh, none is the value for the argument is junk. So the first argument is an argument called is junk, which means that you know if you're comparing two blocks of text, in this case we're just comparing words. So if you're comparing two blocks of text and you have some junk there, you have like break lines and, and spaces, then you need to pass here a function, a function that ignores those lines. We don't have that scenario for now, so let's keep it simple. We pass now there for that argument and then you pass it to strings. So you want to compare the word rain with a double N against the word, the actual word rain. And that will return a sequence matcher object, which is nothing interesting. So you need to apply the ratio method to that to get the actual ratio. Mm, so this indicates a similarity between these two strings in a scale from 0 to 1. So these are, they say that these are quite similar. Now this is about getting the similarity between two strings. But what we need instead is uh, basically we have a list, uh, a sequence of strings. So we have these keys of the dictionary. We have a dictionary with lots of keys and the user passes a word, let's say rain with double N, and you need to compare that word with all those keys of that dictionary. Because you cannot compare rain with double N with rain with, uh, uh, with one N in your program because you don't know that this is actually similar to this. So yeah, <laughs> it's the reverse problem, so to say. But diffleep has another feature for that, and it's called get close matches, like that. So you need to import that from diffleep, import uh, get close matches. But I'll consume this feature in the next lecture. See you there.